Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My paternal grandfather was shorter than my grandmother, but I never really noticed that because he was a giant in my eyes. He was a minister, and on Sundays, he always wore a suit or, most likely, a full-length black robe, even when Des Moines was a sweltering 89 degrees. At 90 degrees, he might leave the robe at home. But the robe was his uniform, as was his title of reverend, pointing him out as not only serving his Baptist flock, but also recognized as a leader in the community. It is important for you to understand the historical role of the black church in the community. During slavery, Sundays were the one day that most slaves did not work. And on that day, the church was usually the center of the social world. The minister was highly revered and recognized as the leader not only by the slaves, but by the slave master. The church was the one line the master did not cross. In the 1960s, a hundred years after the end of slavery, Sunday mornings continued to be known as the most segregated hour in America. Every once in a great while, a white person or two would come into Corinthian, which was my grandfather's church. They were warmly greeted after refreshments. Uh, they were warmly re greeted during refreshments after church, but I don't think we spent a lot of time with them because we knew they probably wouldn't be back. They were the other. And the church was our sanctuary, our safe place, the place where we did not have to answer questions about our hair, the shade of our skin, and we did not have to explain our rituals and traditions. There was a true freedom in that which was not experienced in greater society. We were neither scrutinized nor exoticized when we were at church. I came here because the website said MDUUC was welcoming and affirming, and the principles more than resonated with me. As I entered the church, I recognized many of you were my other, and yet the message from the pulpit fed me that day, followed by a lovely conversation with Kevin Shea at the welcome table, with me holding my red cup. This is my church home today. I see many people I have come to know and respect and love who have walked through the doors seeking something unique and willing to be the stewards for its creation. If concepts were colors, I would ask that you consider letting go of the paleness of indifference, of sameness, and for some fear. That dulls the senses and embrace the vibrance that comes from respect, trust, and a demand that all of our voices be heard. This is not a white church. That would make us a single story. And we have not been a single story for a very long time. But we are at this stage in the life of our faith, exuberantly rewriting our story.